Introduction to Series Objectives By the end of this lesson, you should be able to define a series and use sigma notation, explain the difference between a sequence and a series, evaluate a finite series by expanding sigma notation, and write an expanded series using sigma notation. A series is the sum of the terms in a sequence. So let's remember that a sequence is just a list of numbers that goes on forever. So A1, A2, A3, A4, on and on and on. And the notation was given in curly braces the general term A sub n. And each of the terms is separated by a comma because we just have a list. Well now a series is the sum of the terms in a sequence. So we're adding up all of the terms. Now, in general, this is called an infinite series, but we usually drop the word infinite. And it's infinite because we're adding up all of the infinitely many terms in a sequence. So we're adding a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus a4 plus on and on forever. And to shorthand this notation, we use what's called a summation notation. And this symbol is called a sigma, and it's also called sigma notation. So it's a big Greek letter that is an S, or for some. Now the index is on the bottom of the sigma, so we're going to start at n equals 1, and we're going to end at the number above the sigma, in this case the infinity, not a number. And a sub n is the general term of the numbers in the sequence that you're adding up. Now before we try to make sense of adding infinitely many numbers together, we're going to first take a look at a finite series, which makes a little more sense in a concrete fashion. So in a finite series, we're going to add up the terms in a sequence, but we're going to stop at a particular term. So here I'm adding the first four terms in the sequence. Still the same summation notation, or sigma notation, where the starting index is below the sigma, n equals 1. And the ending index is now a real number, 4. And a sub n is the general term in the sequence of numbers that we're adding together. So we're going to try some examples of trying to understand finite series before we get to what the main focus of um, our discussion is going to be, infinite series. All right, in this first example, we're going to evaluate the sum from n equals 0 to 4 of n squared. So Evaluate as in this is going to add up to be a finite number. We're only going to add a finite number of terms from 0 to 4. So the starting index 0 means that's the first number I substitute into n. So I'm going to have 0 squared. And instead of separating the terms by commas, since we're doing a summation, we're going to separate them by plus signs because we're going to add all these terms together. Now the next number I substitute in is 1. So 1 squared plus then 2 squared plus 3 squared, all the way up to 4 squared. So the number on the top of the sigma tells me that's the last number to substitute into n. So it doesn't necessarily tell me how many terms I'm adding together, because here notice I'm adding 5 terms together. It tells me that's the last number to be substituted into the general term. And now that I have this expanded, I just add them all together. So I have 0 plus 1 plus 4 plus 9, plus 16, and if we add all these together, we get the finite number 30. So this sum from n equals 0 to 4 of n squared equals the finite value 30. So let's try it with another example. Let's go ahead and evaluate the sum from n equals 1 to 3 of 1 over n. So I start substituting in 1, so 1 over 1 plus the next number I substitute into n is 2, plus 1 over 2, and then I substitute in the final number, 3, for 1 over 3. And now I have to find common denominators amongst all of these, so 6 over 6 plus 3 over 6 plus 2 over 6. So I add their numerators together to get a final answer of 11 over 6. All right, for these next two examples, we want to write the sigma notation for the series 1 plus 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus 1 sixteenth plus 1 over 32. So this is going to be similar to finding a general term for the sequence, except now we're going to have to think about 
what the index is going to be. So we're going to have the sum from n equals some number to some number of some general term. So the general term is going to be thinking about the sequence of the numbers being added. So this is like 1 over 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 4. So the 1s are always in the numerator. So my general term a sub n is going to be 1 over something. So to find that something, let's think about these denominators here. So 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. Hopefully you recognize these all to be powers of 2 or 2 raised to exponents that are growing by 1 every time. So 2 is 2 to the 1, 4 is 2 squared, 8 is 2 cubed, 16 is 2 to the 4th, and 32 is 2 to the 5th. Now 1, if we're really clever, we can think of as 2 to the 0. So if I want to write the denominator of the general term, it's going to be 2 to the I can write it as 2 to the n, provided I make my starting index 0. So my starting index is going to be 0. My general term is 1 over 2 to the n. So the question now is, where do I stop it? Well, the last number I substitute into n is 5. So I'm adding up a total of 6 terms, but 5 is the last number I plugged into the n, so that's where I'm going to stop my um, indices. So n equals 0 to 5 of 1 over 2 to the n is the sigma notation for this series. Notice or Note that it's not necessarily this is the only answer. We could actually have started our index at 1 and made this 1 over 2 to the n minus 1. So just to write that out, we could have said n equals 1 to 6 of 1 over 2 to the n minus 1. So that would have done the same thing. So there's not a unique answer. There's many different answers to represent this series, this finite series, using sigma notation. So the last example, write the sigma notation for the series 1 minus 3 plus 9 minus 27 plus 81. So you might be thinking, well, sigma notation is we're adding a bunch of terms together. But we can still think about this as adding a bunch of terms together. We're adding 1 plus negative 3 plus 9 plus negative 27 plus 81. So subtraction is really just adding negative numbers. So it's fine that there is subtraction between them. And what we should notice is that we are alternating between subtracting and adding. And hopefully that reminds you of the term that we realized made our terms alternate previously, which is negative 1 to the n. So we're probably going to want to incorporate negative 1 to the n or something similar to negative 1 to the n to make sure that this series that we're about to write out in sigma notation alternates. All right, so we're going to need our sigma from n equals something to something of a sub n. So let's think about what's happening with the numbers here. So forget the negatives and the positives, just 1, 3, 9, 27, 81. So thinking back to um, thinking about powers now, this is 3 to the 1, 9 is 3 squared, 27 is 3 cubed, 81 is 3 to the 4th, so 1 is 3 to the 0. So the general term here looks like it's going to be a sub n is 3 to the n as long as we start our index out at 0. So our general term is 3 to the n, our index is going to start out at 0. That means the last number that we're going to plug in is 4. But we're missing something the fact that these numbers alternate. So this was what we had previously to make terms alternate. So let's see what it does. If I have negative 1 to the n, if I put that in, well, if I start by plugging in 0, negative 1 to the 0 is 1, and then 3 to the 0 is 1. 1 times 1 gives me 1. That's a positive number. Now, if I plug in 1, the next term, negative 1 to the 1 is negative 1 and then 3 to the 1 is 3, so I'm going to have negative 1 times 3, which is my negative 3 that I'm adding. So it looks like this is correct. I can go ahead and leave my answer as 3 to the n times negative 1 to the n um, from 0 to 4. But again, this isn't the only unique answer. I could have started my index at 1 and went to 5, 
And how that would have affected things is I would have had to have, let's see, 3 to the n minus 1. And that would also have had to have changed this exponent here as well because I want my first term to be positive. And if I left it as negative 1 to the n, when I substitute in 1 first, I'm going to get negative 1 to the 1. My answer would be negative. So how I can change that is I can either add 1 or subtract 1. So if I add 1, now when I plug in 1, 1 plus 1 is 2. And if I take negative 1 and square it, I'll get a positive value. So when we think of alternating terms, this is the first thing that should pop into our head is what we need to add to the general term. But depending on the index, we may also need to um, change the exponent here a little bit to either n minus 1 or n plus 1. So all of these make our terms alternate. It's just a matter of the starting index to decide which one comes first. If our first number here was negative, that would have affected um, our decision for whether we raise negative 1 to the n or n plus 1 or n minus 1.